ETFs are having their biggest year ever. Record inflows, record assets under management. But are they in any danger of being overtaken by a new technology? The blockchain. Let's talk about that with Nick Journey. He's head of innovation at Janice Henderson Investors. He also runs their ETF business. Uh, they are set to take over a short-term treasury fund and begin trading it on the blockchain, bypassing the usual ETF route. Also joining us, my old friend Todd Sohn, ETF and technical strategist at Strategus Securities. Uh, Nick, tell us about this. Janice Henderson is the latest large asset manager to start experimenting with what's called securities tokenization. Tell us what this is, what are you doing with this fund, and how might this affect the ETF business? Yeah, thanks. I mean, look, at its simplest level, tokenization is really just about taking any kind of asset from the traditional financial world, in this case a fund, and making sure that it can be transacted on the blockchain. So I think a lot of people really think about, um, you know, Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies, and that's one aspect of what can be done with blockchain technology. But from our perspective, one of the really interesting things that you can do is take a traditional fund, right, in this case a treasury fund, and ensure that it can be transacted on the blockchain. So you have all the traditional features of a fund, um, but, you know, where an ETF might be traded on a brokerage platform now, you're able to buy and sell it on a blockchain based platform. And that really opens up a huge number of things that aren't possible today with traditional funds or ETFs. Yeah, so I wanna make sure viewers kind of get this idea because potentially, this could be potentially revolutionary. So with tokenization, you're converting an asset, in this case it's a treasury fund, into a, a digital token that can be stored and transferred on a blockchain. And you're not even bothering to turn it at all into an ETF. T tell us about what's the advantages to doing this. What's the advantages for you uh, and for the investor? Yeah, I mean, I, those two things are really closely aligned in this case. I mean, for us, the advantage is just that we think there are potential benefits to the end investor. And th there's a number of things. I think at its simplest level, the way to think about it is that traditional asset managers like us what we do is we have investment insights, right? We provide professional investment management services, and we want to get those services and those insights into the hands of clients. Well, most products, there's a lot of steps between those two things, right? There's a lot of people who stand kind of between us and our clients, and all of those steps take time and money, sort of operational complexity, and blockchain has the promise, I think it's a promise a little bit still out in the future, but it has the potential promise to really collapse all of those things pretty significantly. And what that means for the end investor is kind of instantaneous 24 seven trading, instantaneous settlement, um, total transparency over fund holding. So even beyond what ETFs provide, right? Real time transparency. And then one of the really interesting things I think is, is this idea of programmability. And what that means is that you can use a fund like this um, or any asset really that's on the blockchain as part of an automated transaction. So that might be, for example, something simple like a contract, right? So if you think about um, in the real estate market, for example, the possibility for things like title companies to kind of not really need to be there, um, and those transactions could happen entirely contractually on the blockchain, or in the case of sort of traditional funds like we're talking about, things like collateral management, right? Um, or treasury management, or instantaneous access to cash management, right? So there's a lot of these potential applications. And what we're trying to do is really be involved in the early days of this, right? It is still very early. It's a very small market today. Um, but if we're here today, we're hoping that we can kind of learn and grow with our clients and really be leaders uh, as this future sort of um, develops over the next five, 10, maybe even 20 years. I want to bring in uh, Todd and get his thoughts here. Th this is one of the things about blockchain that I find very exciting. I've been very public before. I'm not terribly excited about Bitcoin, which runs off of the blockchain. It's a cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. But here he's talking about, for example, in the future, settling real estate transactions on the blockchain. Uh, you, you could even do um, settlement, stock settlement on the blockchain. You can send money to your friend in, you know, in England without having JP Morgan and everybody else get in between. And in this case, you can actually take a fund and create tokens around it and trade it on, on the blockchain. Uh, does this, is this any threat to the ETF industry? I don't know about a threat necessarily. I mean, it is very early on, as Nick yeah. just said. Yeah. But I wonder if this is how you start to get more of those private assets up and running in a better, more efficient market than what we're trying with ETFs right now, where you're jamming 
illiquid assets into a liquid wrapper. So there's that side of it. I, I, I like the opportunistic attitude of saying real estate, private equity, whatever it is. The cynical part of me is though, 24 seven trading makes me nervous. It should. Right? So that's the one part where I'd want to be a little bit careful depending on who is using this. So maybe it's not going to be the older demographic because they probably don't understand it, but you know, there's going to be some folks who get tripped up trading 24 seven at three in the morning. Yeah, I don't think we need 24 seven trading myself. Um, that's a feature I can, <laughs> I can do without, but let's keep talking about this, Nick. I know BlackRock, uh, I know Fidelity International, I think Franklin Templeton, they're already running tokenized treasury or money market funds on public blockchains. You, you're looking to join them. Uh, tell me about the cost what kind of cost do you eliminate when you go to decentralized blockchain? It sounds like you're going to cut out a lot of staff here. There's a lot of people that support the ETF business, staff people, and, and you think essentially this will help reduce the staffing, which will help you sort of compete on the cost basis better, right? It sounds like that. Yeah, I mean, look, yeah, I mean, that's the, the over the long term, what you should be able to do is create increased efficiency. I mean, here's a simple example. It wasn't that long ago, all of us on this call remember in our careers, where there was a very profitable industry around printing 600 page long prospectuses and delivering them overnight for bankers in New York, right? That whole industry doesn't exist anymore. Right? It just makes no sense to be carrying around reams and boxes full of physical paper. There's a lot of analogies that exist today in finance. And I think I would agree with the comment that was made that it's, it's not necessarily a threat to the ETF industry. I think it's more of a natural evolution of how we try to get the way in which we deliver investment services to clients to be more efficient and less costly. And we've just seen but, you know, a rapid decline over the last 30 or 40 years in the cost of delivering and accessing right. asset management services. And this is just that 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 next step. So I mean, why, it's very early today, but it's rapid, rapid growth, right? In the right. last but year, Nick, why, the amount why of assets isn't it, has gone up by four times. Why isn't it a threat to the ETF business? You're announcing a fund here that it, you're not converting it to an ETF, right? You're going right, right. to a, a tokenized you know, blockchain structure. Why? It, to the extent that in the past you might have taken that fund and turned it into an ETF and now you're not, why isn't it a threat? Uh, it seems to me like it is, maybe not yeah. this year, but five years, 10 years, certainly down the road, it seems that way to me. Yeah, no, I, it depends upon the perspective, right? So as an asset manager, we don't view it as a threat in the same way that we don't view our ETF business as a threat to our mutual fund business. We view it as an evolution. At the core of what we deliver isn't so much product wrappers as it's investment advice. And we want to deliver that in the wrappers that our clients want to have access to. So I think from the perspective of an asset manager, it, it's not really a threat, it's, a, it's an opportunity. And we, we want to be early in that opportunity. Um, I think there are certainly people in the ecosystem for whom it's potentially threatening, um, but you see those players getting involved. So for example, the DTCC, which is arguably the most significant financial infrastructure in the world, made an acquisition to think about how they can bring their business on chain, right? So a yeah, lot of those types of players who, you know, I think the average consumer doesn't really pay much attention to, custody, clearing, those types of um, really important services, I think what's gonna happen is they really need to think about how they're gonna deliver tokenized solutions and, and yeah. because otherwise they will be disrupted. But for us, what it means is faster, more efficient, less expensive delivery of our services to clients. But yeah, 20 years yeah. from now, it may mean okay. that ETFs are less important just in the same way that mutual funds today are you know, less right. important than they were 20 I, years ago compared to the I ETF don't think, wrapper. I don't think it's going to be 20 years. Um, first off, those of you who don't know, DTCC is the, does all the settlements. They're, they're, they're essentially the structure, the organization that handles um, settlements in the United States. Uh, Nick, of course, is a fund manager, and, and he has to be agnostic on the platforms that he provides this, so mutual right. funds, uh, ETFs, um, tokens. So it, to him, it, it doesn't matter. But the ETF business is a threat to the mutual fund industry, clearly. I mean, this sounds like Forget a threat to ETFs, what about a threat to mutual funds more broadly? Yeah. Especially the retirement system too. I mean, can you get that on chain and change the whole structure of that? Right? There's $40 trillion now in retirement assets across the yeah. US. So that's a lot of money too for yeah. this structure to take, take aim at. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think you, you would agree though, this is very early on, but in, yeah. in the long term, th this can replace an ETF structure in certain circumstances, right? It, I wouldn't, I mean, I'm, uh, as an ETF person, a love of ETFs, I don't want to see it happen yeah. too quickly, but you have to adapt right. or you know how things go.